Hello everyone, this is going to be our week three herbology class. Today we're going to be talking about drying herbs and magical properties. Um, first of all, let me just give you a couple of updates. Um, I know that we're really far behind right now, guys. I'm, that's totally on me. I'm, I'm really sorry between just personal life and I was sick there for a couple of weeks and it's just there's a lot going on um but I'm determined to get us caught back up we're going to get back on track for these last couple of weeks of classes and we will finish off strong um so one thing I wanted to mention in particular was we did miss our midterm and the original plan was that we were going to have our midterm game and the person that answered the most questions correctly in the fastest time would get a prize from me. Um, so since we weren't able to do that for the final that we're going, that we are going to do, um, no matter what, we're going to have a final exam, even if we uh, have to omit some material. So for the final, what we're going to do is we're going to choose two winners and it's going to be the top two people with the most correct answers in the fastest time for that um, final game. So there will still be two prizes going out for this semester. Uh, we're just going to be doing it a little bit differently. And I really am sorry that um, things have kind of fallen the way that they have, but we're going to get caught back up. We're going to fix that. Okay, so another change you're probably going to see over the next few assignments um, as I'm releasing these uh, weekly classes, I'm, I'm going to try to cut back on homework assignments. Um, so you may not see as many focus questions as we normally do. I'm probably not going to be releasing many, if any, reading assignments at all, uh, mainly because I know we all have a lot going on independently and between both servers that most people are in. We all have a lot of clubs we're in. We're doing a lot of stuff. Everyone's got a lot of classes. So for this next little bit of our semester, the last portion of it, I'm going to be cutting back on what we're doing. So just a heads up there. Um, I, I would like you to try to still answer the focus questions. And as usual, uh, just post those in the homework discussion channel for our class. But as always, nothing is mandatory. You know, just do whatever resonates with you. I will still be releasing the quizzes. I do encourage you to do those. Um, if for no other reason than just for um, the fact that they, the questions for our final will come directly from those quizzes. So you'll want to know the answers to them so that you can participate in that and have a chance to win one of the prizes that we'll be offering. Um, so other than that, I think we're pretty well caught up on how the next few weeks are going to go. Um, I hope, I'm hoping that it goes fairly smoothly and I'm determined to get us back on track. I was hoping to get us caught back up a couple weeks ago, but then life just kind of took over. Um, anyway. Okay. So we're going to get started on this before I dig into the material. As always, I know that you all already know this, but I do have a toddler here and it is never quiet in my house. Um, so you might hear some background noises. It is just my child. She's okay. She's just a little, a little loud. She's two. So, all right. So let's go ahead and get into talking about drying herbs and flowers. So why do you want to do this? First of all, if you've already been buying your own dried herbs and spices and flowers, you know that they're fairly expensive. And if you are able to grow your own, this is definitely a more cost effective way to go. It's definitely not going to be as expensive. But also, if you're not able to grow your own, you can still even purchase your own fresh herbs at the farmer's market and your produce section um, they don't have everything you might need, but they do have a lot of things there. And most of them are things that are pretty commonly used for our magic. So you can buy fresh herbs there and dry them yourself. And you're still going to see a, a savings financially there. So it's, it's still worth it to dry them yourself. Obviously, if you have the ability to grow your own herbs, I highly suggest it just because as we've already discussed, you're able to infuse most of your magical properties in them from the start. And it just leads to better spell work, more effective spells. It's just better overall. But you, you, not everyone has the ability to do that. And that's okay. So just do the best with what you can and you're, you will still have good spells. So it's just something to think about. Um, but also, in through your drying process, you're still going to be talking to your plants. You're still going to be telling them what they're going to be used for. It gives you the chance to keep connecting with them as you have been through their growth process. So, 
for those of you that weren't able to grow them yourself, at least being able to dry them yourself does give you that chance to connect with the plant. And this is just a way to honor Mother Earth and treat her plants the way that they should be treated. Give them the honor that they deserve. And as always, this is a great way to have better spells and just better herbs overall. And, and honestly, it is a fun process. It's, it's always good to learn a new skill. And this one is actually a really fun one. It's nice to see the progression of your plants through, you know, their growth process into their drying process and then their use within your spells. And it's just, it's fairly, it's really rewarding. It's fulfilling spiritually. So let's talk about how you're going to start this. The first step is going to be harvesting your plant. And there's a few things I want you to think about as you're harvesting your plant. First of all, we've already discussed how different types of herbs, spices, minerals, things like that, they come from different parts of your plant. So with that in mind, you want to take into account which part of this plant you want to use. You know, the stem, the root, the leaves, whatever that might may be for what you're trying to get out of this plant. And you also want to think about the purpose for this herb. How are you going to be using it? You might need to consider whether it's a herb that you need to be fresh or whether it should be dried. Think about that before you put this herb or plant through the drying process. And also think about the life cycle of your herb or spice. If this is a flowering plant that you want to use the leaves for, you want to harvest that plant before the flower buds bloom. Because once it does that, the herbs are not going to be as potent as they normally would be. So you want to make sure you harvest them before that flower blooms. You want to harvest your plants in the morning after the dew has lifted. One thing to note is that once the sunlight hits them and starts to dry the plant out a little bit during the day, it's going to lose a little bit of its potency. So the morning after the dew is lifted is really the best time to harvest them. Of course, I know not, that not everyone has the availability to do that. So work within your schedule, but that is absolutely the best time to do that. So you want to make sure that you're cutting your herbs or flowers at the stem, but try to limit your harvest to less than one third of the plant. Once you start taking more than that, the plant has a hard time surviving. It may not be able to pr produce more foliage if you cut more than a third of it off. So just try to keep that in mind. So the next step is preparing your herbs for drying. You want to make sure that you're washing them Plants can easily attract dust, um, different insects, things like that. You want to make sure that they're as clean as they can be before you dry them. It's really important to have healthy herbs. So just gently wash them with water. And then once they're thoroughly washed, you want to take a dry cloth or paper towel and gently dry them. Um, the best way to do that is like sandwich them between a cloth or paper towel so that you can pat them thoroughly. But before you start this drying process, it's very important that you ensure that all the moisture is gone. You don't want any water on these plants. It can cause a lot of molding and that will absolutely ruin this for you. So the third step is to tie up your bundles. You want to gather all of the like herbs into a bundle. For example, don't put your peppermint plant with your rosemary plant. Put them together in like bundles. Use a string or rubber band to secure them together at the stems. You can see that well demonstrated here in the photo that's in the bottom middle. Um, but also, I know as some of you are getting started, you may not recognize these plants right off just at a glance. And that's totally okay. Most of us don't. It's, it's a process of learning them really well. So in the beginning of you drying your herbs, it's totally okay to just label them so that you're aware of which ones are which. Okay, so the next step is to hang your herb bundles to dry, and you can hang them by a string or clothespin in a place that has low moisture. Uh, you want to make sure that it is shady and dry. You don't want any moisture getting to these herbs. That, like I said, that can absolutely ruin them. And one thing that I normally do is I just have a cross string that would go from like one point to another, and then I hang my bundles from that. Uh, your bundles should all be dry within about a week, but do check on them daily. 
Uh, you want to make sure that where you've chosen to hang them is actually a good spot, that they are not capturing any moisture. And you also want to make sure that you're not letting them over dry. They, be they can become so brittle that they'll just fall apart. So you want to just keep an eye on them, make sure that they're doing okay. And they can dry quicker than a week. Some plants might take a few days. So just keep an eye on them. The next step is preparing them for storage. First thing you want to do is removing your leaves or flowers from their stems. And you can always crush them with a pestle or mortar if you're ready to use. But I would suggest that you don't do that until you are ready to use them. It's best to leave your herbs whole until you're ready to use them because this helps them retain their magical properties and their flavor. They're just more potent that way. And step six is going to be storing your herbs. After you have crushed them or if you've decided to leave them whole, whatever you're going to do with them, then you want to store them in airtight containers in a cool, dry, and shady location. Do not ever store your herbs if there is any moisture left in them. I know I keep saying this, but I really want this to be the thing that you retain out of this lesson is that you do not want to store herbs that have any moisture in them. It will absolutely ruin them. And it's also important to make sure that you store them out of the sunlight. If your containers are left in the sun, it can alter the properties of your herbs and also just dry them out to the point that they're not going to be worth using. Um, obviously, you want them to be dry, but it gets to a point where they're just so dry that you can't do anything with them. Also, it's important to store your herbs away from sunlight as it can alter the state of your herbs magically and otherwise. You want to make sure that they're staying in good shape. So one thing I also wanted to point out is that if you don't have the ability or the space to hang your herbs to dry, you can dry them flat. Um, this Flowers are really good for being dried flat, but you can do that with other herbs as well. One thing, though, that I would like to note is that it's best if you're able to dry them flat in a location where air can reach them from the bottom and also from the top. Um, the photo here in this slide on the right is a really good example of that. Now, on the left, you see a photo of flowers that are left out to dry. Those will still do pretty well. Um, I would just advise you to try to have them suspended and in a mesh surface of some kind so the air can permeate through that. So let's go ahead and talk about the magical properties. First of all, there are so many magical properties that plants, herbs, flowers, that all of them can have within themselves, within their spirit. But we just don't have the time to cover every single one of them. We just can't. Maybe that'll be something we do in another semester. Um, but for this semester, what we're going to be covering are these magical properties listed. Courage, love, luck, prosperity, travel, wisdom, protection, fertility, happiness, and peace, success, insight, and health. And we're going to be covering them over the next few lessons. And one thing I want you to know is that when it comes to these magical properties, you may not always have a spell that is literally calling for these exact magical properties. Sometimes you might have to get a little bit creative. You might have to use different magical properties within one spell. One spell might call for the use of multiple properties. So don't always look for the most literal use of these properties. So like, for example, let's say there's been a lot of stress going on in your life. You're feeling really overwhelmed and you just need to do some spell work that's going to bring you some calmness. While there might be herbs that are associated with calm, you could also look at other herbs. Maybe you could use herbs that are associated with peace and happiness. Those might also bring into your life what you're looking for, into your spell work, you know, bring into your spell work what you're looking for. So just try to think outside of the box. It always it doesn't always have to be so literal. And a lot of the times you may not be able to find herbs that are associated with certain magical properties that you need. So you might have to just kind of branch out a little bit. Maybe you need a spell that's going to give you good travel. Maybe you're about to go on a, on, on a trip and you want to have safe travel, but you can't find those herbs. They're not readily available to you. That's okay. Let's look at other things we can do. Maybe we're going to use some herbs that are associated with luck with happiness, with health. 
with success. Those can also give us the properties that you might be looking for with a travel spell. So, like I said, just try to think outside of the box. Everything doesn't have to be so literal. It really is your intentions, what you're looking for in your spell work. And your spell might look different than someone else's. But it's what resonates with you. It's what works for your practice, for your craft. And what you do does not have to be the same as your neighbor. So just, just remember that. All right, so as we're wrapping up today's lesson, let's talk about these focus questions. We're only going to have two for this lesson. So after this lesson, do you feel confident that you could properly dry and store your own herbs? You know, I know that as a new process, it could be a little bit intimidating. But do you feel confident that you could at least try it? As we move into the next part of our semester, we're you know discussing the herbs associated with each magical property. Is there anything that you're really interested in learning about? For example, do you have a spell that you're thinking about doing that you really want to learn about this magical property with these plants associated with this magical property? All right, so normally at this point in each lesson, I discuss what you can expect for next week. But since we are still catching up, um, it's really difficult for me to tell you. And again, I really apologize for that. I'm so grateful to you all for being so patient with me this semester. Um, but I can guarantee you that what I'll be doing is tagging everyone in updates and classes as they're available. I know we've missed, um, we've missed a lot. We've missed a lot of the Saturday recaps. I am going to be holding those moving forward. Um, and basically we'll just be discussing whatever has been released that week. And I, I know that doesn't give you a lot of clarity, but just look to me for pings, for updates, and I'll make sure I'll keep posting those so that we do know what's coming up and what we're going to be discussing. So that's all I have for our week three lesson. I know this was a fast one. I'm going to try to keep most of these lessons pretty quick and concise so that we can easily move forward. Um, but I will catch up with you guys in the next class. Thank you.